please welcome our superhero sponsor, SPS Commerce, and their super squad, Sean Martin, Senior Dynamics Product Specialist, Judy Weston, Strategic Channel Sales Manager, and Chrissy Matheson, Vice President of Sales and Business Development. Today, this trifecta will be saving the day with their session, Meet the EDI Solution That Scales for Success. Stick around after their session for a live Q&A with these real BC superheroes. Hi there, Chrissy Matheson at SPS Commerce. Welcome to the second annual DynamicsCon event. We're super excited that you've taken some time out today to join us. Uh, I have a couple of folks with me here that I would also like them to introduce themselves. Judy? Hi, everybody. I'm Judy Weston from SPS Commerce. Um, I am celebrating my 16th year here at SPS. 11 years in the channel, um, working for Chrissy. So welcome everyone. We're super excited to spend some time with you. Sean. Sean Martin here with SPS Commerce. I'm uh, here to uh, present the EDI solution from the standpoint of the integration with uh, Business Central and um, be here. Thanks so much. Uh, as Judy, Judy mentioned, she's been here a long time. So have I, about 15 years at SPS Commerce. Mm -hmm. So you've got probably 40 years of EDI experience and Today, we're going to show you why that mediocre EDI solution you have that isn't serving you isn't worth it anymore. Let's take a look at what we can do. First, we're going to cover SPS and the Data Masons experience. So if you all haven't heard, we've had some really exciting news in the Microsoft space at SPS Commerce and happy to share more about that. We're going to give you an overview on the EDI landscape. What does SPS in a full service EDI solution feel like? What does it mean to you? Sean, as he mentioned, is going to provide a demonstration for you. We'll cover what the support experience looks like and then certainly leave some time, some time at the end for Q&A. So please make sure you are chatting in your questions and we will be live uh, answering Q&A for you. Um, let's dive in. When we take a look at EDI and all the components required for EDI, whether you do it yourself in-house with your team, you work with another provider or you work with SPS, here are the seven components that are required for a successful EDI deployment. The first one is the technology, literally the technology to be able to exchange the information from one format to the other. Then you've got to know your customer or your trading partner really well. Costco and Target have very different EDI specifications and testing processes, and you're required to understand what that is. Next, you get into design and configuration. So how are you designing that solution? How are you configuring it to work with your retail trading partner and your business? Once you've got all that figured out, you have to, to work on communicating with the trading partner. Or do they connect via VAN, AS2, FTP, API? Then there's a dedicated testing and launch process to be able to be put into production with that trading partner to even get your first EDI purchase order. Once the solution is live, there is an extensive process around ongoing support, meaning when something goes wrong, who's responsible for taking care of that, who's calling uh, Target or Costco, and then that proactive monitoring and analysis. An optimized EDI solution, you want to know that something is wrong before it gets to your trading partner before it causes problems in your supply chain. All seven of these components are required for a successful EDI solution. It is really hard. It's why SPS has been doing this for 20 years, helping 30,000 plus subscribing customers do it better. Because what we find in the market is that other solutions only provide a small portion of what's required. You may get a piece of technology, you may get some counsel on designing and configuring the solution, and you might even get some limited external support. So when something breaks and you call them to tell them that something is broken, they may help you with it. It's not a fully outsourced, um, full service approach. What that leads to, and potentially maybe some of you in the audience here are struggling with some of these same business problems. It takes a long time to onboard a new customer. So you just sold your, your product to Kroger 
and you want to be able to get those orders and fulfill them, but EDI and the complexities with it are slowing you down. It has unpredictable IT costs when companies are managing that in-house or potentially working with another provider that only gives them part of the solution. From an ongoing support perspective, it's really difficult to get ahead of a problem if you don't have a proactive way to monitor it. So customers are in this consistent reactive situation on dealing with EDI problems, and it's damaging the relationships they have uh, with their customers. So over the next few minutes, we'll maybe help you to understand how you have an alternative to what you're doing today. Thanks, Chrissy. Um, as you alluded to, for the past couple decades, we've been um, at this EDI game, and I like to think about this as how we think about EDI. In our 20 years of experience, understanding our customers' needs, the needs of the Microsoft community, this is kind of what we've learned that customers need in order to have a successful EDI implementation. Um, what does that actually mean? What does the full service EDI solution mean? Um, by the way, we're the only EDI company in the space that, that offers a full service EDI solution. But what does that mean to you? It means that SPS has the people, the process, and the technology so that our customers don't have to think about EDI, nor does it have to be a core competency of their company. So let's kind of unpeel that a little bit. So we have the market leading technology piece um, as evidenced by our recent acquisitions of data masons, which we'll talk about um, in a few minutes. A team of experts that you can count on to lead you through the implementation, give you guidance on best practices through our last 20 years of experience, and as well as the process and relationships that SPS has, has gained over the last 20 years. So we have a department here at SPS of over 50 people that their primary job is just to coordinate with uh, retailers, EDI coordinators, to make sure that we're being kept abreast of changes, things that are happening in the EDI industry, and things that we can proactively, proactively monitor for our customers. Just a snapshot of, of our network um, over the last couple of decades. So SPS very deliberately built the largest trading partner network. And we did that by building out to each one of our buying organizations one time. So those 3,000, or it's probably up to 3,500 trading partners that we have in our network, we build out those maps one time and we reuse those for every one of our customers that does business with a, a retailer. So for example, example, Amazon, we have 1,500 customers that get their orders um, through SPS for Amazon and their data runs on the same map. So what that means is throughout all of our different relationships, that's 80,000 pre-mapped connections. So we're not looking to, to point to point uh, each one of your connections. You're plugging into a network that already exists. And through those conversations with our customers and with their buying organizations, we've also added 1,000 3PLs. So we're able to connect to those as well. Um, 400 system partnerships, and then some security certifications uh, that we're pretty proud of too. Christy, do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, the one thing I would maybe add here, Judy, is um, as I was alluding to at the beginning, there is a whole host of complexities associated with wiring to your retail trading partners, your vendors, a third-party logistics provider, potentially a carrier, all the constituents in a supply chain that have to touch an order so that your product can get to the end consumer or to the shelf. We've been doing this for 20 years, it's pre-built. The analogy I like to use is, if you need electricity in your house, you certainly don't go build a power plant in your backyard. You call the local electricity company and you subscribe to that service and you know that when you put the lights on, the lights actually come on. You don't have to worry about it when the lights don't come on. Um, this is our, our suite of services at SPS. I know that we're talking about the blue box in the middle, which is um, your EDI with your instance of dynamics, but just through our conversations and uh, our research in the market, um, just wanted to run through some of the other solutions that we offer, uh, especially on the, the left-hand side, the item data. This has become so much more important in the last year with the, the change in the landscape um, with our 
our customers shifting towards a drop ship model. So they're having to provide more item data to those online retailers so that they can get all that data out onto the website. And SPS has a solution where we're able to consolidate all of that into um, help our customers get that information to those um, retailers quickly. On the right side, we also have some analytics offerings that will tell our customers what's been sold in, in each store, inventory levels, we can help with that. And then as Chrissy mentioned down at the bottom, we also do some supplier onboarding, meaning you sending orders to your supplier community to help our customers. So this is a depiction of kind of the way EDI has been done traditionally. If you look at the left-hand side, you've got four different buying organizations who all have four different ways of connecting and four different specifications for all of those maps. So you start out with trading partner one, how do I connect? Let me get the specifications. Let me build out all the maps for each one of those trading partners, document types, order invoices, ASNs, uh, order acknowledgements. Let me set that up in my system. Let me test, let me figure out how to get that automated into my instance of D365 Business Central. And okay, great. That took a while, I got it done. All right, trading partner number two, let me go through that same exercise knowing that the connectivity, the mapping, and the translation is all going to be different. So you can see how after each one of these trading partners, this gets really complex very quickly. And it requires somebody at your company knowing something about EDI and mapping, not to mention the, the um, troubleshooting when something goes wrong and you didn't know about a mapping change. The SPS model on the other side is the network approach. So SPS takes into consideration all of the requirements of each one of your trading partners, creates a single file format. Those maps are, the data is running on those same maps um, that SPS has built in our network. And so when we look at this trading relationship, you can think of SPS being your trading partner, not those four different buying organizations, because what we're gonna do is trade a consistent file format back and forth between SPS and your instance of Dynamics. So you don't have to worry about what those individual trading partner requirements are. We're gonna parse everything out for you and send it to your trading partners in the format that they wanna receive it in uh, with the connectivity of their choice. Thanks so much for that, Judy. Uh, really good depiction. The next thing we wanna bring your attention to is obviously SPS has been doing the network side, the left-hand side of the equation for 20 years and uh, provide world-class service there. Now the interesting part you probably want to hear about is, well, that sounds great, SPS. How is that actually going to work with Business Central? Are you guys experts on that side? Let's just take a couple of minutes to dive in there. As you may have heard, uh, SPS in December of 2020 acquired Data Masons. Why this was such a strategic decision for SPS Commerce was we have many Microsoft Dynamics Business Central customers who were asking us for world-class integration expertise on the Business Central side. Luckily, SPS and Data Masons had already been partnered together for well over a decade, serving hundreds of customers together. This really brings the two teams together and provides the only end-to-end -end full service EDI solution for the Dynamics Business Central market. Diving into what that actually looks like, I'm gonna pass it off to Sean. Excellent. Um, well, thanks, Chrissy. Really where I thought I'd start from the standpoint of the SPS automation solution is we really take more of an external approach to EDI. So what that really means from the standpoint of ERP is we are not going to introduce any core customizations, make any core code changes to the ED, uh, ERP to support EDI. So with Microsoft and their one version, you know, most of the Dynamics customers can expect anywhere from six to eight releases per year. Um, with those releases, two or three are going to be mandatory. So with that external approach and the simple fact that we do not customize ERP to support EDI, it really is a big deal to our clients that have to go through that upgrade process because we're not going to interfere with it. We're going to make it simple and easy for them to be able to upgrade. The automation solution is also multi-tenant. So when you go to the product demonstration, you can see you can launch the solution from any mobile device that uh, you ultimately want to view from. Um, it's browser-based. Um, and really, we're trying to blur the lines between ERP and EDI. 
The integration framework that we utilize is OData. So it's OData to the endpoints um, or entities to ultimately update your endpoints. So it's that OData integration framework. We're gonna to touch on a little bit of the concept of management by exception. How do we really communicate to the right people that need to know that there is an exception? When it took place, how do we you know, communicate to them quickly and efficiently? Along with that, give them the tools to be able to solve quickly and easily. Also for our customers that would rather uh, receive um, you know, these exceptions in a report format or they wanna receive an audit report, we can also automate the sending of these reports uh, to the right people within your organization to make sure that this information is getting communicated quickly and easily. And as Chrissy and Judy had already mentioned, we've been partnering you know, with um, you know, the SPS uh, from a data mason standpoint for over 10 years. So we've automated over 25 uh, different document types into the ERP, not only for standard X12 EDI uh, formats, but we can also work with any of the other formats, EDI standards that are out there, Edifact, VDA, Tradecoms, et cetera, including any of your non-standards EDI maps, which would be you know, XML, ASCII 2, CSV, and so forth. And then lastly, from the standpoint of the SPS full service model, it's all about giving time back to uh, your, uh, your, your people within your organization so they can focus on higher priority initiatives versus focusing on EDI. So with that, uh, I am gonna go ahead and if you can stop sharing, then I'll go ahead and share my screen. So you should be able to see my screen and what I thought we'd do is just start from the standpoint of the ERP. Business Central. And the whole concept here, again, as I mentioned earlier, is to really blur the lines between ERP and EDI. And we do this, again, by not changing core code in ERP, but utilizing the extension layer within Business Central, uh, dropping in contextual hyperlinks, that's gonna give you complete visibility to everything EDI. So right before the meeting, I integrated, um, uh, an inbound purchase order that just came in from this example that we're using is Target. So when I come into my open sales orders, the first thing that I wanna point out as I scroll down, we're gonna go down to uh, the sales order that was created. So we're gonna bring in the, S, uh, the, the sales order through the uh, retail network. We're gonna translate to our standard, which is XML. We're then gonna apply you know, all the business logic, your validation against that uh, inbound purchase order. And then ultimately, we're gonna deliver a perfect document to the ERP to create that sales order. So now that I'm in, we're looking at the sales order, I'm gonna go to this example and we're gonna pull it up. So you can see that everything came over, everything integrated successfully, and I've already went in and released uh, the sales order. So from here, again, back to the contextual hyperlinks, that we've uh, introduced to Business Central through the extension layer. We're gonna give you complete visibility to what we call the Transaction Lifecycle Explorer. It's really the entire life cycle of this order as it works its way through the ERP process and the transactions that we're automating behind the scenes to your trading partners. So from the standpoint of the TLE, just to simplify time, when I click on the TLE button, we're gonna show you exactly what is taking place from a transaction standpoint. So here you can see, I've received an inbound PO from Target. It was a purchase order, it was inbound. And we're gonna show the exact date and time that it was received into EDI. We're also gonna represent the exact date and time that it was integrated to ERP. We're gonna reference the original purchase order number. And here you can see that the status is complete. For those of you that actually need to see raw data, with one click of the button, we can actually show you the raw data that made up that inbound purchase order to ultimately create that sales order. So again, it's that complete visibility to all the transactions that are being automated between you and your retailers uh, from an EDI standpoint. The other area that I wanted to touch on too is if you do wanna go back and look at the originating purchase order, We've also translated that into a human readable version. So now anybody on your customer service team or whoever needs visibility has complete visibility to what was received. 
you know, from the line item details, the quantities ordered, uh, your actual unit price, you can go in and look at addresses, dates, et cetera. So again, it's really trying to give you that complete visibility from ERP into everything EDI. And it's meant to be simple and easy to work with. From there, um, another point that I want to pull up uh, from the customer account card, uh, again, is trying to give you more visibility from ERP into EDI. So I'm gonna go in, we're gonna look at target. Uh, we'll pull it up. And right here, we're dropping in that, that uh, tile and we're giving you visibility into the transactions that you've done specifically with target. So if I wanted to go in and look at all of my item cross-references, or if I want to see ship to cross-references, or look up that trading partner from an EDI perspective, everything is a click away. If I want to see all documents that are currently on hold, specific to Target, again, you're one click away. So if I were to click on the item cross-references for Target, from that visibility, it's one click away. We're going into the um, uh, item cross-references, to quickly and easily be able to view my customers' item numbers versus our internal, you know, item numbers. And again, it's meant to be quick, simple, and complete visibility. The last element that I want to uh, talk about is just really from the integration um, portal with uh, the automation component with SPS uh, is what we refer to as the dashboard. This is really where you're going to see all your key performance indicators for everything EDI. So you can change the look and feel, you can really configure this to make it your own experience. I can resize these boxes. We can change you know, from a pie graph to a donut chart. However, you need to see this data. Not only is this data reflecting those key performance indicators, but with a click of a button, we're gonna drill down into the detail and now we're gonna see all those documents that are currently on hold that require some attention. So it's one click away. We bring you into what we refer to as the document explorer. You can now see all these documents are currently on hold. They're all invoices, they're all outbound, and it requires your attention. Click of a button, I remove the filters, and now we're gonna see all the transactions inbound, all the transactions outbound, with the quick ability to go in and filter down to exactly what you wanna see. The last piece, and then I'm going to turn this back over to uh, Judy, is really the automation. This is the heart, the engine that drives all the automation behind the scenes. And this is really where we've taken all of the business processes from ERP and we have uh, built in the automation to automate the sending and receiving of those documents to and from trading partners. That way you're not actually ever in here pushing buttons, you know, to, to send documents. It's all running behind the scenes based on your specific business processes. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the team. Thank you, Sean. That was amazing. I love how automated Business Central EDI can be. So before we go on to the implementation and support uh, at SPS, I just want to bring to your attention that we are also running our SPS fulfillment solution in the background. So it's a standalone solution. Everything's being copied from... Uh, each one of your trading partners so that you have a human readable format of every document type that's being traded through the automation, as well as some document types just don't really make sense to, to automate into Business Central. For instance, there's an 864 text message that really just doesn't have anywhere to live in Business Central. So we would post a human readable format um, on there. We also have reporting and some of our customers choose to use this fulfillment solution. If they're just starting out with a relationship with their trading partner and they're not sure that that relationship is going to continue. So to talk a little bit about what our implementation looks like, uh, what you can expect with SPS as your um, EDI department is that we're gonna be with you every step of the way. From the beginning where we're setting up all of your trading partners, taking the, taking the lead with communication of your trading partners, those maps are likely already built. So we're gonna be adding you to that trading partner network, going through the testing, giving you the benefit of our 20 years of best practices, leading you through that, as well as holding your hand through the go live, making sure that we have 30 days of stability, and then also proactively monitoring your data to make sure that if there's anything that we can do to optimize your solution, that we're bringing that to your attention. And, and what should be noted here is that other EDI providers 
get you about halfway through through step one? Yeah, a couple of things that I think have been super valuable for our customers over the years is we literally pick up the phone and call Target for you so that you don't have to. So if you're trying to evaluate the current EDI solution that you have today, or potentially you're new to EDI and you're out there um, shopping the the other solutions, I I would ask that question. Um, That is a differentiator Uh, that our customers have received a lot of value out and really, I think, demonstrates the fact that SPS Commerce is a full service provider. We've got 1,500 employees. We've been doing it for 20 years and we are optimized to help you grow your business. Yeah. And I think one other thing to add to that is because we represent so many of their customers that those EDI departments that we call, they pick up the phone when we call. Um, And then what does support look like for you? So we kind of put this into three buckets. So SPS and you, and we talked a little bit about this already, that you can expect us to lead the way. You can expect to gain efficiencies from our experiences and the times that we have fallen down and scraped up our knees. Um, You don't have to do that. We've already done that for you. Um, SPS and your trading partners, as Chrissy mentioned, we will call, pick up the phone and call your trading partners and they will, they will answer us. And last and certainly not least, um, training and education. We certainly do that throughout the implementation process, but we also realize that you have changes in personnel and that training is ongoing. So we also provide our customers with access to, um, you know, training videos. You can schedule a one-on-one training. Um, If you need support, you can chat us, call us. Um, We're available 24 by seven by 365. And this is kind of our, our full service promise to, to our customers and what you can expect from us moving forward as your EDI department and partner. Um, we strive to make sure that our solutions are the easiest to use and that we insulate our customers from any of the changes that are being made by their trading partners and making those changes on their behalf many times without our customers even knowing and certainly without a disruption to their business. Secondly, we recognize that your instance of Business Central is unique and that we need to account for those unique requirements. So we make sure that while we're through this implementation and any ongoing changes that need to be made, that we're keeping, in, we're keeping those, those, the uniqueness of your business in account. And third, last but not least, we bring ongoing value. You can count on us to be going out into the market and finding out what things are happening. For instance, the pivot that most of our customers had to make from a ship to to retail to a drop ship model. How can we make that easier for our customers? Maybe they need a new third-party logistics provider and providing our customers with recommendations and new product releases. Um, For instance, you know, carrier service that we just um, adjustments to. I, I think what you can consistently expect from SPS Commerce is for us to be ahead of the curve in terms of what the market, meaning the retail trading partner community is gonna require of our customers. Um, We are consistently uh, engaged with our customers through voice of customer program to ensure that we are continuing to deliver ongoing value to our customers. We really appreciate the partnership and feedback from our customer community, um, our group of suppliers, but, but equally important is the relationships we have with our retail customers. So SPS Commerce, how we got started was by partnering with large retail organizations to onboard their supplier community. So there are a lot of times when a retailer makes a change to their program where SPS is enabling the supplier community, it also means we are the first ones to get the heads up that they're making a change to their advanced ship notice or to their invoice requirements or potentially rolling out some new um, document types or changes to the things that are happening So we're consistently ahead of the curve there. I get the pleasure of of wrapping up this discussion in terms of the summary of what we discussed today. As you recall from the beginning, when we talked about the seven core pillars, um, we spent the the meat of, of this discussion really helping you to understand how there is an alternative way for you to meet not only EDI requirements, but help to leverage EDI to optimize your business. SPS Commerce is the only full service solution out there in the market who takes on all seven of these components for you, not just part of them. The differentiation happens when we proactively monitor these transactions. So if you send us an invoice, for example, out of Business Central that doesn't meet Target's invoice requirements, we're going to stop the transaction 
and fix it for you if it's an EDI issue, or we're going to call you and work with you and gather the additional information you need on that invoice before it even gets to Target. Think about the relationship that you have with Target now when they go scorecard and you're at the top of the EDI compliance list. You're not sending them, uh, continuously sending them documents that need to be adjusted over time. Based on the demo that Sean showed you, Data Masons has been in the Microsoft ERP space for an equal amount of time with tremendous expertise there. So when you combine that SPS commerce full service approach and that pre-built network with that already pre-built ERP expertise, it delivers to you an end-to-end -end solution that allows you to go focus on other areas of your business instead of chasing down IT projects in terms of an EDI solution. A couple of things we'll leave you with um, that, that I believe are, are really important. It's great that uh, we have 30,000 subscribing customers to our service, but we have to ask ourselves, are we maintaining, are we retaining those customers over time? And you can see there, SPS is a retention leader. Um, we've got a retention rate of 86%, which is world-class from a SaaS business perspective. And I think what that tells you is we earn the business of our customers month in and month out. We just celebrated our 80th consecutive quarter of growth as a publicly held company. And we hope that you choose to be part of that uh, network of customers. On the right-hand side there, you can see we had 780 competitive wins over the last 12 months. What that tells me as a leader inside of SPS is that companies who are using an alternative solution are looking at this combined solution that SPS is providing, and it is a superior solution to help them scale and grow their business. The last thought that I'll leave you with is uh, whether you're currently a Business Central user today and looking at an alternative EDI solution, please feel free to reach out. We'd love to answer any questions that you may have, help you on the journey. Probably more importantly, if you're evaluating Business Central to move from another ERP application, when you move ERPs, you break your current EDI solution. You are going to have to implement a new EDI solution anyway. So why not look at SPS and this full service approach to see how it will meet your needs? Thank you so much for your time today. And we hope that you're getting extreme value out of the DynamicsCon event. I certainly know that as a a partner of DynamicsCon, we enjoy engaging with the community and appreciate the opportunity to sponsor. We're super excited to move into the question section and we're excited to answer the questions that you may have. So please make sure you're chatting them. I know for me personally, Judy may say the same thing. Uh, the acquisition of Data Masons and our ability to come to this market with a super strong end-to-end uh, -end solution in the Microsoft space has been a professional dream of mine. I've been in this market a really long time, so we are super excited. Sean, I would like to officially welcome you to the Judy and Chrissy show in the Microsoft space. <laughs> Woo! Glad to be here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the live Q&A session. Hi, Sean. Hello, Chrissy. Hello. Top of the morning, changed. afternoon, and evening to all the DynamicsCon um, folks out there. And thank you so much for your engagement in the chat screen. So I'm going to be moderating our um, question and answer session. And let's see if we can stump Sean and Chrissy. All right, first question, and by the way, thank you guys all so much for the compliments and the congrats on the um, on the Data Masons acquisition. Um, as Chrissy mentioned in the recording, we um, welcome Sean and the entire Data Masons team to the SPS Commerce family. Um, question number one. Um, well, this is a this is an easy one. Um, is the 943 included as a supported document, Sean? Absolutely. Uh, the 943 is a supported document with the integration automation layer with uh, Business Central. So absolutely. OK, that was an easy one. Second question from David Gersten. Hello, David. Will you be moving off of the BCEDI connector to something you own and manage yourself versus another VAR solution now that you have purchased Data Mason? Chrissy, do you want to take that one or would you like me to? 
No, I will. Thanks, David, for the question. I think uh, the easiest way for us to describe it is we're going to provide our customers in the BC market choice. Um, if they want to purchase the uh, solution that SPS had prior to the acquisition, we can certainly explore that or um, the data masons option um, is out there. We are in no way going to disrupt current <laughs> customers that are already in production. Our number one priority is to make sure that um, customers who are who are happy with what they have and in production um, stay the way that they are. As we mentioned in the recording, anytime you make a change, um, you know, from an EDI solution perspective, there is work to be done. So we're not going to invent reasons to to migrate those customers onto the data mason solution. I hope that right. answers the question. Yeah, I think Chrissy, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Totally. <laughs> okay. Uh, another question here, and this would be for Chrissy as well. What is your experience with 3PLs? Yeah, so 3PLs are, are interesting um, because they're very integral to the supplier's um, supply chain in order to fulfill product, to get product on the shelves. SPS, by the nature of what we do in the viral network um, environment that we live in, we have over a thousand 3PLs in our network. We can connect to your 3PL in any way that they want to exchange data. Most of the time we see those connections in that 900 series EDI document, that example of the, of the 943. Um, but really we have flexibility to connect to the 3PL. The most valuable part of including a 3PL connection um, with SPS Commerce is that it gives you full visibility across all of your retail trading partners, your 3PL and ultimately the fulfillment of goods. So we're very experienced at it. We've been doing it a long time. So any further questions, please just let us know. Great. Thank you, Chrissy. Sean, this one is for you from Michael Sedlock. Where is the business process logic stored in this solution? The business process logic uh, with data is really stored in the data mason solution. Of course, we're leveraging all of the business processes from ERP, but uh, from the standpoint of the integration, uh, as well as automation that actually resides within data mason's. So I would just add clarity there, um, and Sean, you you hold me true here. The basis of the integration leverages all of that business logic that you already have inside of BC. We will make EDI specific business logic in the integration layer, but it's not like we're recreating the logic that's in the ERP, if that's helpful. True, Sean? 100% correct, yep. Okay, you guys are doing pretty good so far. Um, how about um, Sean? How do new Business Central releases affect the EDI, uh, the the Data Mason's EDI connector automation? That's actually a great question. Uh, with the Data Mason's EDI approach mm -hmm. with SPS automation, um, we take an external approach to EDI. So one of our core competencies is that we're not going to introduce any co core code changes, any customizations within ERP to support EDI. So as new releases come out, come out, uh, it will not impact um, your ability to take that next release. We're also part of the pre-release program uh, with Microsoft. So we're well ahead of uh, uh, the release cadence and um, that's pretty much it. I would add maybe there, uh, you know, there's two approaches in the market from an EDI perspective. There's the approach that, that Sean just described as, as the SPS approach. And then there are other EDI solutions that go very deep into the ERP and start augmenting the ERP. That becomes difficult, number one, documenting the customizations over time to the upgrades in new releases uh, that Sean just talked about. And then thirdly, it makes it very difficult to make potentially a different EDI decision later. So you'll have a ton of, of custom logic in the ERP based on those, those retail and potentially 3PL connections. We see both sides when customers come to us. So we do spend a fair amount of time trying to help coach customers through how to unwind that mess. So just something to consider as you're out there evaluating EDI solutions. That's a really good question to ask. Great. Thank you. Uh, another question from David Gersten. Um, many prospects are already using your ERP solution with QuickBooks or another ERP. What does it look like as they migrate to Business Central from an EDI perspective? And maybe, also, what are the costs? So maybe you could touch on both. Sure. So I'll, I'll maybe just take that one. So for an existing SPS Commerce customer who 
uh, is leveraging QuickBooks or some other ERP moving to BC, we already have that relationship established with the retail trading partner. We already have live data. So very minimal testing on the supply chain side, on the retailer, on the 3PL side. Where we end up focusing the testing is making sure that BC is set up, your tables are set up, customers are, are in there, items are in there so that we can do some testing on the ERP side. So I would say that an existing customer's implementation to BC is, is condensed because we don't have to go do that retail work. When we think about price, the customer is likely to consider um, a similar or, or slightly higher uh, subscription fee just based on the technology that we're gonna use to uh, implement BC. Um, I hope that helps. It does. I was thinking that maybe you could touch upon um, the the differences in in the you know data masons pricing model and uh, what it is moving forward. I know we talked about that in the recording, but just to kind of reiterate. Oh sure. So uh, pre acquisition, data masons had a professional services um, heavy pricing model. Um, SPS has basically mapped all of the pricing components into the way that we go to market um, and price our products and services, which means predictable. Uh, upfront fees to connect to a trading partner. So very similar to the way that uh, um, customers would be used to working with us. Um, and that allows for a the the cost of the implementation to be fixed and known. But the benefit then is on is on the customer because if it takes us five hours or 100 hours to get the connection live, the customer is paying the same price upfront from a per trading partner perspective. And our subscription fees are very are, are essentially similar in nature. It's based on the number of trading partners you have and the number of transactions that you're transacting. One other thing that I'll add there is one, um, we talked about 3PL connections, but SPS Commerce does have the ability to connect to marketplaces. So think about like Shopify, Big Commerce, Amazon Marketplace. So if your if your implementation includes some of those connection points, don't be afraid to ask us about it. We're we're able to accommodate. Really good point. Thanks, Chrissy. Um, <clears throat> this one's for Sean from uh, Andre Lungu. How does it calculate the prices when sales orders are created automatically? Uh, so we're we're de defaulting back to uh, ERP, um, really from the standpoint of your your uh, calculations and and everything else. As Chrissy mentioned earlier, we're leveraging the logic within the ERP. ERP to make sure that uh, everything that's coming in from a validation standpoint is done correctly within EDI. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, not all, I think this one's for Chrissy. Not all of our partners have the volume to justify an automation with Business Central. Can you talk a little bit about what our solution looks like and, and what some of the enhancements are? Yeah, that's actually a great question. So uh, SPS does have a, a standalone fulfillment solution, which provides all the same compliance to the retailers. It's just in a UI that's easy to use that doesn't automate to um, BC. Customers use that for a few reasons. One, the they don't get a lot of transactions, so the cost to automate doesn't isn't justified. Two, they may have some automated connections, but they just sold to Costco and. Costco is a seasonal company and they, they ordered product this Christmas, but we're not sure that they're gonna order next Christmas. So I would say volatile trading partners in terms of, of transactions can use that fulfillment solution. And it does things like give you human readable purchase orders, allows you to pack an advanced ship notice, print UCC 128 labels, send invoices. We have many optimization features available that help customers reduce keystrokes. We also have the ability for uh, carrier service, which will help you automate the shipping um, label with UPS and FedEx. So we'll just do calls right out to those applications to get um, the tracking number so you don't have to go to multiple systems. So I would say a lot of our customers find value in that fulfillment solution. And when they get to the point where it's, I don't know, 100 to 150 orders a month. So think about then you have 100 ASNs and 100 invoices. That's about the point where customers want to talk about automation and that business case does justify itself based on the the the, the, the effort, the manual effort um, to get those orders into BC. Sure. And I'll also add to that one of the standard features of our fulfillment solution is 
We do allow uh, customers who kind of get one off orders here and there from maybe a mom and pop shop to enter those orders um, into the, the fulfillment solution and then take advantage of those enhancements that Chrissy talked about, like that carrier rate shopping service. So that's another thing that our customers are using that for as well. Um, follow up question to the 3PL. If suppliers and 3PL need access to the SPS dashboard, do they need licenses and special permission, Chrissy? Yeah, so um, you can think about SPS services as we're not licensed software, it's just a subscription to the service. So for that fulfillment solution, a lot of times what our, our supplier customers do for our 3PLs is just set up a separate username and password for the 3PL to access it. Um, it's $49 a month of a very nominal fee just to make sure potentially that you may not want the 3PL to see the pricing of your product, for an example. Um, so that's out there, not a separate license, just a, I would just call it a separate subscription nominal fee. But they can print the UCC 128 labels. They can pack the ASN for you, leverage the UCC 128 labels the same way that you would be able to if you were fulfilling out of your own warehouse. Okay, perfect. Um, <clears throat> it looks like, I, I think I got all the questions here, but one thing I wanted to, Wondered if you could expand on Chrissy is, you know, a lot of people think about EDI as, you know, receiving orders and sending invoices. You want to talk a little bit about our, um, you know, our buy side or, you know, orders to their vendor communities and what that community outreach looks like? Yeah, so we have customers that um, both receive inbound orders, but they also want to procure product. They want to purchase product from their downstream suppliers and, and manufacturers of goods. We have not only the technical capacity with the same automation that Sean demoed and the same you know, full service that we just talked about, but probably more importantly is SPS Commerce helps you determine what that EDI specification looks like. And we also perform the function of reaching out to your suppliers, performing that testing um, for them to make sure that when they set up the solution on their side, they can meet the requirements. So that is true if you have one supplier, 10 suppliers, or we do it for big, large, big box retailers like Target, for example, um, or Costco, uh, where we're onboarding thousands of, of um, vendors on their behalf. Another important thing to note is you might have a, a purchased product in high quantities, numbers of orders, and you want that downstream supplier, you want automation, but that downstream supplier doesn't have an EDI solution. They can also just purchase a subscription to fulfillment, the same thing that we just talked about, to be able to receive your orders. And we do see that a lot. So the flexibility with SPS is not only can we service your needs, help with the retailer compliance or, or buying uh, customers who are purchasing your goods, also the three PLs and then on that downstream supplier side. If and when you need to connect to your suppliers or you may have large suppliers like Procter & Gamble, well, they're not gonna take your EDI specification. They're gonna want you to take theirs. We accommodate that as well. So we're here really just to, um, I would say, be experts and to coach you in the best <clears throat> way to uh, deploy the automation that you're looking Okay, I think we have one one more question. Um, what are what are your partnership requirements? Um, and I'll take that one since um, I work with all of our Microsoft um, partners. Be happy to um, chat with you about what a partnership with SPS looks like, and um, and also um, put together that you know what what benefits that um, that would bring to you as well. So I'll reach out with, to you after the the program. Um, oh, one more question. We have vendors in China. Do you have EDI resources to onboard these vendors to get EDI set up? We do. Um, also worth noting, we do have an office actually in China that's part of our, our APAC region. So we do offer language support uh, out there. And a lot of the big box retailers that we work with have US vendors and they have vendors uh, in China. So we do have history and experience um, performing that function in China as well. And as Judy mentioned, just reach out to Judy. She'd be happy to, to get you the details. We can connect you with the, with the right folks. 
All right. Well, that seems to be about it. Um, I'd like to encourage or thank you all for attending the session and for these great questions. Um, we really enjoyed it. Uh, please stop by our booth if you have questions. Um, we're happy to happy to engage. I'll be in the booth for the next um, couple of hours. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks to DynamicsCon. This has been a great conference. We really appreciate you inviting us to be part of it. And, um, and Chrissy, Sean, any parting words? The only thing I would say is the BC community rocks because yeah. you guys had so many more questions than the FSCM community. So way to, way to win that. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.